Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. This video is an update video showing how to install an OpenVPN server on Unraid, giving us secure remote connections to our server and our network. So, I made a video about OpenVPN last year, but the Linux server guys have really improved and updated the container, so I thought it a good idea to make another guide. Now especially as Christmas is nearly here, and a lot of us will be going away to see family etc. Well, if you feel sad that you're not allowed to bring your server with you whilst visiting them this year, then fear not. Just make sure you set this up before you leave. Then you only need an internet connection and you can have full secure access to your server whilst you're away. So for those of you who are not sure what OpenVPN is and why it's so good, well, it will make an encrypted tunnel through the internet connecting the server and the client together securely. So that means you can connect to the same network that your server is on from anywhere in the world where you have an internet connection. It's just like your computer is directly connected to the local LAN. So this means that you can connect to the Unraid web UI, you can start and stop VMs, Docker containers, and access all of your files. So this is for connecting you to the server securely, and not for connecting the server through a paid VPN service such as private internet access for use with torrenting, etc. For that, please see my other video on setting up Deluge VPN here. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing, I'm gonna click onto info here, so I can easily check my network interface name. You can see here mine's called Bond Zero. So I'm just going to copy that because I'll paste that into the Docker container template later. But let's just go to settings and then look at the network settings. And enable bonding is set to yes. And that's why my network interface name is Bond Zero. Let's just quickly look on my other server here. And let's look at the network settings again. Again the enable bonding is on yes. So the interface name is Bond Zero. But if it's set to no, then you can see the interface name is different, this time being ETH0. So it's always easiest just to check that before you start installing the container. So let's do that now. So let's go across to the Apps tab and do a search for OpenVPN. And the one we're going to install is Linux Server's OpenVPN AS. So just click on the hard drive symbol and that will bring us to the Docker template. And the first thing to do is just to check the network interface is correct. I'm going to have to change mine here, so I'm going to paste in what I copied earlier. So now I've got Bond Zero in there. And I just want to draw your attention to the host port 3, which is 1194. Now I'm going to copy this, because this is the port we need to forward to the Unraid server in order for OpenVPN to work. Okay, so that's everything in the template. So now let's click Apply and pull down the container. Okay, so OpenVPN is now installed. But before we actually start up the container, let's go across to our router and forward that port 1194. So this is a Netgear router, and most routers will be pretty similar to this. You're probably going to have to go to the advanced settings, and then have a look for a section called port forwarding. So here I'm going to click on to add custom service, and I'm going to give it a name, obviously OpenVPN and make sure it's set for UDP and then the starting and ending port we want that to be 1194 that's what I copied out of the template earlier and we want it directed to the internal IP address which our server has and for me here that's 192.168.0.199 but before we leave the router settings let's just set up a dynamic DNS service now this allows us to map an ISP assigned dynamic IP address to a domain and subdomain so this means that instead of using an IP address which constantly changes, we can just use that domain name. Now not all routers support dynamic DNS, but many do, and some such as this Netgear router allow you to sign up for a free service right from the router page. But if you can't do this, then there are some free services which you can sign up for, such as DuckDNS or NoIP.com. Also, if your router doesn't support a DynDNS client, we can set up a DuckDNS container on our Unraid server. And to see how to do that, then please see this video here. OK, so that's everything set up on the router. Let's go back to Unraid and then go to the web UI of the OpenVPN container. 
Now when you get here, it will give you a warning that your connection is not private. This is normal, so just click on advance and then proceed to the destination. Now here we need to put in the username and password. The default username is admin and the default password is password. Now make sure you change here to login and then click on to go. And next we need to click on to admin and then put in the same username and password again. And then click sign in. And here you'll have to agree to the license agreement. And now we're in the web UI of the OpenVPN Access Server. And the first thing to do now we're here is to check that the user authentication is set to local. So for that, under the authentication on the left hand side, click on to general. And here, this should be set as local. If it isn't, then please make sure it is. And then click save settings. Now let's just look at the status overview. And this tells us our active configuration. And here we can see some useful information. We can see the server version, and if we look at the server name, here it's the IP address of my Unraid server. Now this isn't going to work if we leave it at that. This is an internal IP address, and it's no good for connecting from the outside world. So we either need to put in a static IP address here, or we need to put in what we created earlier in the router settings for our dynamic DNS. Under that we can see authenticate users with is set for local, that's good, that's absolutely fine. And underneath that, accept VPN clients on IP address, and then you can see my interface name bond0 and the IP address of my Unraid server. So that's correct as well. However, underneath that, the port for VPN connections, we don't want to use a TCP connection. It's always best just to have one port forwarded, the fewer the better for security. So we're only going to use UDP 1194. That's the port that we forwarded earlier in the router configuration settings. So next let's click on server network settings and then change the IP address here to the dynamic DNS tracker that we set up earlier such as your router's built-in one or maybe a duck DNS one. Okay so next we need to change the protocol from the both one to UDP but notice when we do this it puts the port number in automatically as 9443 so we need to change that to 1194 so make sure you do that. After which, click on Save Settings. And then click Update Running Server. Right, with that done, now we need to add some users to be able to use the VPN. So now click on to Use Permissions, and you'll see there's already a user here, and that's the admin user. This is the user that we're logged in with at the moment. So now let's add a new user. So in this box here, just type in the username you want. Let's add a username, let's add one called Gary and we're going to make him an administrator. So just tick this box here. Now Gary is also going to need a password, so we need to click on show more settings here and then type in a local password into this box here. Everything else we can leave as it is and then click on save settings. And so now we have two users, admin and Gary. Now one of the best improvements to this container is that the users we create here are persistent in the earlier version of this container, each time we updated the docker container, we had to reset up the users each time. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. But, every time we update the container, the admin user, by default, will be recreated with the username admin and the password password. Well, this is a little bit of a security issue. So we can stop this happening and delete the admin user from the system. That's why we just made Gary an admin earlier. So let's log out of admin, log back into Gary, and then go back to the user section. Now because we're logged in with a different user, that means we can now delete the admin account, because the other user is also an admin. So let's click delete and then click save settings. OK, so the admin account's gone. And while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly set up another user. OK, so now we've got two users created. The next thing we have to do is make sure that the admin user isn't automatically created if we ever update the container. So to do that, we're going to have to go across to where the app data is stored on the Unraid server. And then go to the OpenVPN AS directory, and then the ETC directory, and then we need to edit the as.conf file. So let's go to that on Windows. So let's navigate to that directory and open the file. Now it's very important that we use a proper text editor to edit this, 
If using Windows, use something like Notepad++, and if using a Mac, then use something like TextMate. Then we want to scroll down to line 55 here, and we need to comment out this line here. And by doing that, it will stop the admin user being created when we update the container. So just put a hashtag in front of it to comment it out, and then save the file. So now let's just test out that that's worked. So let's close this and go back to the Unraid web UI, and then on the Docker tab, in the top right hand corner, switch it over from basic view to advanced view. And then you'll see now we're allowed to force an update and that will update the container. So now let's click on the container and go to the web UI and try and log in as the admin user like we did when we first set up the container. But no, we get login failed, so that means the admin user doesn't exist. So now let's try logging in as one of our regular users and then go to the user section in the web UI and see if the admin user is there or not. Okay, good. The admin user definitely isn't here. So that means we've edited that file correctly in the last step. So that's the OpenVPN server set up. So now we just need to test and see if we can actually log into it remotely. So now let's log out of the OpenVPN web UI and then log back in and download the configuration files that will allow us to connect. And you can see here there are various clients that we can use to connect with. Windows, Mac, Android, iOS and Linux. Now you can use any of these you like and they will have your configuration file built into the client and you just download it and install it on your OS and it should work fine. But if you have any problems then download the Yourself user lock profile and use it with the OpenVPN client of your choice. Now because I use OS X this is actually my preferred method anyway as I really like to use the program called Tunnelblick. So I've just installed Tunnelblick and it's asking if I have a configuration file. Well I've downloaded my configuration file and it's that file you can see there on the desktop. So now I'm just going to install it into a Tunnelblick and connect to the OpenVPN server. Now the username and password I'm putting in here is the one that we created for the user in the OpenVPN web UI. OK and so now I'm connected over the VPN to the server and you can see here it says that I'm connected so everything's working fine. OK so now let's do the same on Windows. Do a Google search for OpenVPN Client, then on the OpenVPN page, let's download the installer here. And once that's done, let's install the application. OK, so that's installed now, and here, this is my configuration file for the OpenVPN. Now we're going to have to put this file into the correct place. So let's right click on the shortcut on the desktop, and then click open file location and let's go up one directory and here is a folder called config now this is where we need to put the configuration files so I'm just going to drag and drop that into here and close this window and now if we click on open VPN GUI that will start the program running and then if we go to the bottom right hand corner and click here this icon here with the padlock, that's the OpenVPN running here. So we just right click that and then click on to connect. So it's going to ask for our OpenVPN username and password. So let's pop that in. Click OK. And now you can see it says that the server is connected. OK, so that's how you set up your own client with the configuration file in both Windows and OS X. You can, of course, download the pre-configured client straight from the web UI, but I've found this not to always work. Now before we wrap this up, I just want you to be aware that testing the VPN when you set it up can be difficult. Now you're not going to be able to make a VPN connection to your server if you're on the same network. You need to be elsewhere. Now an easy way to do this is to use your cell phone, connect it to a 4G network etc. Maybe make a hotspot and connect your laptop to it and then try connecting. Or you could use a TeamViewer connection to another computer elsewhere and then set up the client from that and test that everything's working. Now also, don't think that the connectivity test in the OpenVPN will tell you if everything works. When you run that, it will probably fail, so just ignore that. Anyway guys, I hope you found the video useful enough to hit the like button and please subscribe to see more videos. If you like what I do and you'd like to support the channel, any donation is really appreciated 
which you can do through the PayPal button or the Patreon link in the description. And I'd really like to thank everyone who's donated to the channel in the past. Anyway guys, that's the end of another video. And whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you all next time.